We're back with uh, Workshop Wednesday doing some painting tonight of some various and sundry minis. Um, something going to be pretty simple. So I have this pretty cool skeleton mini, giant skeleton. I want to uh, just put a, a wet wash on him that will, so it might be, might be female, you never know. But that'll just give it some, some highlights. Um, I've got an Ifrit. So a sort of uh, demonic, uh, Middle Eastern inspired enemy there. Got to paint that up. I've got a four-armed gargoyle. And I printed actually the, the wings, as you can probably tell. Uh, the wings are, if I can get that to focus, doesn't want to. There we go, uh, getting closer. The wings are printed in white and the rest of it in gray. I'm going to repaint this probably a darker gray. Um, just to get it, get it consistent. I've also got, uh, well, since I'm going to do a, <laughs> a wash on this guy, I was going to do a wash on this guy. A big giant, it's called a battlefield elemental. It's just a big bunch of rocks and flags and shields and remains of people down there. There's actually a, a guy up here on top that's kind of been fused into him, which is pretty nasty. Um... So I just want to again sort of throw some uh, some some black on here into the into the the, the highlights, if you will. Um, so I'm not going to start there. Uh, and to do that, I'm going to need some water in this. And I'm actually going to need some some tissues. Let me grab some tissues. I'll get to your question in a second. Uh, let me get some water in here. Okay. So I have just a little water in this. And I'll add some black to it. So uh, Mike asks in the chat room, welcome Mike, um, if you're still here. Um, yeah, Mike was here for, for the last show, so this might be a, a leftover comment. Any suggestions for what someone should get if they're interested in 3D printing? So that's a great question. Um, I'm a big a fan of the Monoprice brand. They're a Chinese company, and they produce these really inexpensive but decent quality printers. Um, the ones I got printing back there um, have about a 4-inch cube print area. They're about 200 bucks. US, so very cheap. Good, good to see you still there, Mike. Um, so I really like Monoprice. They, they seem to be a good middle ground, and again, pretty inexpensive, and they come fully assembled. So there's no, no assembly other than like maybe, um, uh, you know, plugging in cable, you know, plugging in the, the power cable, things like that. Um, but yeah, very, very effective. And the prices are low enough that like if something goes wrong, buying a new one is not a terrible, terrible thing. So I got some water there, and I'm going to add some black paint. And since I'm going to be throwing a lot of paint on these, I'm going to go with a, a big brush. So I'm just going to pull out a lot of this uh, black and work it into that, that water. And this is still a very, I think a pretty, uh, pretty wet wash, so to speak. Let me go ahead and go. Oh, oh, get I got paint all over me. Just got paint all over me. Good job, Brent. That is black paint all over a perfectly good shirt. Right there. See? See that? Because I'm sick and I'm trying to do too many things at once. Too much stuff going on. Alright, one second while I go and throw this in the wash. Uh
Okay. Um. <laughs> All right. So let me uh, let me start on this. So my guys, if you get an open chassis printer, it's the best practice to build something like you have back there to keep out dust and the like. Looking at you, Kitty. Um, I wouldn't say necessarily best practice, but it's a really good idea. Um, uh, and it, it serves a couple of purposes. One is that it keeps the heat in, so you have a more consistent printing temperature, and stuff tends to print a little bit better when it's hot. Um, so that is definitely an advantage. Um, so I'm just rubbing a bunch of this black paint on there, and obviously it's incredibly black, which is kind of like, oh, what are you doing, Brent? But don't worry. I'm going to dab this with... Uh, with this, with a with a cloth, basically, and dab most of that black out, and what you get as a result is this very nice sort of accent on it. it just makes it look a little bit more interesting. I'm gonna tear some of that off, and then same thing with the skull. And then dab that off, and it just kind of settles in those spots. And just gives it some definition. I think I'll do the fingers as well. So that's just dabbing some paint on there, and it makes it also a little uh, gray, which. Uh, you know, skeletons aren't necessarily bone white. Ha, ha, ha. You know, they can be, but they can also be kind of dirty. And that's what this kind of uh, implies. That the, uh, the skeleton seems some action, so to speak. I'll probably also paint... Yeah, I should paint the spear. That's important. There's our, there's our guy with some with wet wash on him, and as you can see, it just makes him pop a little bit more. And I might just dig in a little bit more paint on the head. Yeah, so I was a little more careful on that now, and as you can see that. So I didn't dab quite as much, and so now there's a lot more definition on the various parts of the head. I like that a lot. Um, cool, I'm pretty happy with that. And now we're gonna do the same thing on this guy, which again makes some sense with this sort of battle-scarred thing, this, uh, this, actually not battle-scarred, but just this rock that's been uh, a set of rocks that's been magically animated, it should look kind of dirty. And that's what the, uh, that's what this will do to it. We'll give it that, not only the dirt and the grime, but also just, again, that kind of sense of detail, that it'll darken up those, those edges. Make them a little sharper, ideally. We can also do a dry wash in here. Try that. Yep. It will also sometimes, especially on a model like this, it'll tend to run around into little crevices and kind of um, loop around other sides of it. So you'll do one side and then turn it over and realize that there's a whole loop of wetness on the other side. So you gotta be aware of that. Um, Yeah, the heated, heated build plate is more or less mandatory these days. You need a heated build plate. So yeah, so um, let me continue with the 3D printing thing. And I should point out, I will, I'm thinking of doing, uh, I really should do a series of videos about 3D printing for the channel. Like that just totally makes sense. Um, uh, maybe as part of the live show, I'll just do a kind of, let me answer your questions. And this is actually got enough ink on it now. I should move on. Um, okay, so a, an enclosure keeps heat in. It also keeps young hands from touching very, very hot uh, build plates, right, which is very bad. Uh, you, know, you do not want a child 
coming in here and touching a build plate that's 60 degrees centigrade, or much less an extruder uh, nozzle that is 200 degrees centigrade. That's, those are bad times there. So um, that's, that's helpful. Uh, and it also keeps out some of the, that particulate. So as it, the 3D printer is 3D printing, um, it is releasing some uh, stuff in the air. And as far as we can tell, it's not toxic, but you can build up sort of an allergic uh, reaction to it. So you can get kind of uh, um, sensitive to it in the air. So it's nice to keep it as contained as possible. In fact, um, I'm thinking of building another uh, enclosure. I have some other printers over to the side, over there, uh, two of them. And um, they were, that was sort of my repair bay. And now that I've got them back and back and working and running, I want to uh, add an enclosure for them. Um, because that is actually an active, useful uh, part of my my stuff. I used to only have a couple of those, a couple of printers running at any one time, but now I've got quite a few. Um, so I have four actively printing printers, which is really cool, but it also means, you know, there's more particulate in, in, in the air. Um, yeah, 12 is still, you know, young enough that, and young enough to know better, but still do the wrong thing anyway, right? And I've done a lot of volunteer work with kids that age, so you know, I'm not speaking out of turn there. Um, you know, I, I love kids of those age, but they can still be pretty mature. So just be aware of that. Um, so yeah, an enclosure is not a bad idea. Again, not something you have to run out and do day one, but useful. Um, and it also, just, I mean, I can tell the difference in the, kind of the air quality, if you will. You know, there's sort of a closeness in the air if I have the, that off, as opposed to having the, uh, having it on and, uh, and keeping all that stuff in. So it's, it's worth doing. All right, I'm definitely liking how this is looking with this extra black wash, wet wash rather. Add some onto the body, dead body down here. Give it some black paint. And then try to rub that off. Smooth that off. Good. Again, the purpose here is to rub off much of it, a large percentage of it, and just leave the bit that's in the, the crevices. And one way, if you're having some issues with that, is to rub it, is to, to get it on there and just kind of let it sit for a few moments. So it's kind of sinking in drying a little bit and then rub it off. Probably want to give it a little more time than that but that can help to uh, get into those crevices a little bit better. Okay. <coughs> yeah, see that's not really sinking into a lot of those those spots. I, I probably have a slightly too wet base. <coughs> yeah, four printers going. Um, and others just in various states of, of decay, so to speak. I, ha I own ten, technically, but I, that's, you know, one... At, at least three of those are just not operable. Like, I can plug them in, and I could plug them into a, uh, via USB and command it to move around, but it can't print functionally. Um, there we go, that's better. Just all the mechanisms are too, uh, uh, are just worn out, basically. Um, you know, if I try to print with them, they just wobble all over the place. Which is un unfortunate, but that is the way 3D printing kind of is. Um, so yeah, one of the big things to think about with 3D printing is kind of the size you're looking for. The normal sort of starter size right now is a four inch build area. And that, that'll get you a good amount of, of stuff and material and uh, prints. Uh, where do I find the models? The models are... Um, there's a site called thingiverse.com, T-H-I-N-G-I-V-E-R-S-E, and they're probably the premier um, 
sort of uh, repository for these files. You just go up there and you download stuff. Everything on there is free, although there, there are various um, various licenses for it. So some of them are going to be non-commercial and so forth. But all the stuff they have on there you can download, which is nice. Uh, and they have all sorts of stuff. There's actually a, a guy, MZ4250, who released, who modeled and released uh, minis for all of the creatures in the original D&D Monster Manual, which is really cool. And I think pretty much all of his stuff is on Thingiverse. He also has them on other places. Um, and uh, Wizards was pretty cool about that. They, there was some, some initial issues because they had contracts with other people to do, to do that. And they, like, they said, we love what you're doing, but we just have to make sure that, that we're not... You know, we don't want to take your stuff offline, but we, you, know, you can't necessarily be on this service because it's competing with this other service that we're, we're working with. So um, you know, Wizards was, uh, did their best to, to allow that to continue uh, while still remaining you know, compliant. So that's where I get a lot of my, a lot of my minis, and you can just Google, you know, um, dragon miniature 3D printing, and you'll generally find stuff. <clears throat> and then you start following, you know, various people who do various things. Okay, I think we've done a pretty good job here with adding um, enough extra, you know, blackness, if you will. To give this some action and again, it's kind of dribbling around some of these spots, so I'm, I'm, I'm having to go in and, and just check and make sure there's not a, a big black spot somewhere because the the wet paint moved around. But that's pretty good. Certainly better than before than just that that one um, uniform tone. So there's our rock monster again, just a little bit more more a detail on that. Move it over to the side and let's get this off. Now we're going to start getting into some detail. Something a little more complicated. Oh, there's something else. You may have noticed it over here to the end. Um, yeah, you can actually see the rocks now, exactly. Um, I also have this guy right here. Uh, fans of Stranger Things may recognize this as the Demogorgon. So I 3D printed a Demogorgon for my players. And I don't have to print it out right now because you're not going to face it anytime soon. But I would like to get a fair amount of this guy uh, painted. And one of the complexities is that the Demogorgon has a power where he can create a, a, uh, a mirror image of himself, a false image of himself that goes around the battlefield and nobody knows which one is which until they actually attack. And then if they hit the physical one, um, or if, if they hit the, the fake one, it, it disappears. But until they do that, they think there are two Demogorgons going around. Which means I have two Demogorgon minis. <laughs> um, and I want to paint these to look essentially identical. So I can put these out there and, and do this. So this is kind of nuts in terms of having you know, this stuff here ready for, for 3D printing. But yeah, exactly, Shadow Jutsu. So, um, and again, this might not be tonight, but I kind of like to at least get a, a base coat or two on this um and the complexity there is if i have a custom color for any part of these i need to i need to mix up enough to paint both of them at once so that custom green needs to go on this one and this one so that everything matches so again we might get to that tonight might not but i gotta have this this uh, uh gargoyle painted up and again this might just be some gray and a bit of black for, for, for detail and such, and some smudges, kind of like with him over there. Um, and then the Efriti, and I do need to look up, I assume it's in the monster manual, what the Efriti looks like as a starting point for my color scheme. Um, there's an Etin, Drow, Ettercap, Empyrean, doesn't look like, no, there's no Efrit in there. Is there one in Volos? I'm not sure. Flynn, Gurlon, Giant, Giant, Flail Snail, um, Dragloth. Okay, no. So I need to look up on 
the internet. All right, what is the Ifriti look like? Okay, so we're looking at um, red skin, uh, sort of blue and gold accented uh, clothing, and then um, there's not much else in the way of clothing, actually, so that makes that easy. All right, so I can get off. There's a few little things there. Yeah, he basically just has this uh, this loincloth on, so I'll do that as kind of a nice uh, dark blue and, and gold trim kind of thing. Um, he's barefooted and then sort of bronze for the, the bracelets and, and anklets. And then, of course, the, uh, um, the sword. Now, my 3D printer had some problems with the tip of the sword. As you can see, it's kind of wavy. So the thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a flaming sword. So it'll be sort of metallic, and then I'll, I'll taper that to kind of a, a reddish uh, hue to indicate that it's kind of shimmering with flame. <clears throat> Something along those lines. Um, but yeah, so we have, have sort of this dusky red color for his body. And I think, as usual, what I'm going to do is uh, paint him that base color. Well, actually, no. You know what? Um, I'm going to paint this guy a uniform gray. I have just a slate gray here. And with that on, so that that can dry, and then I can add the the, the wash, hopefully, before the end of the night. So sort of, so hopefully, by the time you know, this will dry um, before tonight's episode is over. Turn the drow, um, and so then I can go from there. Actually, that's a almost exact color match for that. That, that gray, that's awesome. So maybe I can just paint up the uh, the wings. That might be doable. Yeah, I think we're going to be okay there. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much exactly good. That's convenient. Did not plan that at all. This is the color of a, one of the filaments I bought. Not, not at all color matched to any of my uh, paints. So good. Now, you know, obviously if I were a little bit smarter, I might paint these separately and then glue them together because the, uh, the wings were a separate print that I glued, glued it on. Um, this is a little less convenient to get in all of those little spots, but also I'm painting it all one color, right? So if I goop the paint off onto something else, then it's not that big of a deal. It'll still look, should still have basically that same color. So we'll just do our gray on these wings. That's easy. And then hopefully that will be dry within the next hour or so. You know, enough that I can then uh, pick it up and put, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, and then put the wet wash, the black wet wash on there. Okay, oh, I need that, that tip as well. One reason I like doing this, using a base uh, paint color, or just a, a standard color, you know, not mixing every single color, is that if I miss something, I can always come back and add that exact gray and I'll get that exact gray. I'm not uh, as limited with things in that sense. That is, that is a convenience. Okay, so there is that painted up. I think I've got all, all the spots painted up. So I'll move that over to the side. <clears throat> cool. <coughs> Excuse me, that's drying. Man. Being sick sucks! And I don't think I got anything on, the, on that. Good, okay. So, we've done that. I don't think I need any gray on the Efriti. What I will do is, because we want a dusky red on the Efriti, I'm going to grab some red. I need more red. Oh, make a note of that. I don't think I have a spare red. 
it up. Oh, pull off some of the bag. Oh, right here. So I'm gonna uh, pull off some red. Oh. Camera's a little shy. So let me grab some red. I need a fair amount of red for this. And I might add some more. That's a lot, but that's fine. And I'm going to add some gray, not some black. The black's going to more or less overwhelm it. Um, we'll add another. Okay, and then we're just going to mix that around. In fact, I can use this brush that has gray on it. We're going to mix that in and we'll see what we get. Should be a dusky brown. Yep, that's a nice, that's a perfect brown. In fact, I might go a little little more gray on that. In fact, I think if I just scrape off the rest of the gray on that, that might give me my nice... Gotta be careful here because you can kind of spread it out real thin and you don't have much in the way of the paint left. That's great. So I've got this almost purpley uh, red, which is just fine for me, for my Efriti. Set this down here. I should probably have like a cup to put those in so I can like toss them and they're not going to mess the things up. But um, so we're going to go ahead and paint up. And I am going to be a little more careful here uh, in terms of I'm not going to I'm not going to bother painting the entire thing since I know I'm going to paint, you know, his trousers, his uh, loincloth and such. You know, normally I do one entire coat in my base color. But since I'm right here, and I kind of know what I'm doing, um, that's not really effective for me right now. And I just realized I have way more paint than I need. So I will see if there's somewhere else I can add some, some red. This might actually be a very effective blood color. And I think I'm going to do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use some of this and spatter it on perhaps the, um, the skeleton, but also certainly my rock monster. He's going to get some spattered blood. This is a pretty good, maybe a little bit darker. It would look really nice as a dried blood. We'll get all the way up in here, as far as we can go. Again, might as well cover as much as you can while you're at it. And then we'll paint stuff. This is another thing I like to do when I'm painting minis, is to pay attention to my colors, and if I custom mix something and have too much of it, say, okay, well, where else can I use that color while I'm here? And I could even go to my other minis and look at them and say, hmm, what mini would benefit from a little extra spattered blood on it? You know, is there an orc that I can spatter with blood? Maybe I'll do that. That's a neat idea. I'll just pull in my orc minis and create a nice blood spattered orc. I think Orcs should, uh, should do that. Yeah, such color skill. I, I wish I had color skill. Um, but it's just you know, playing around uh, and trying different things. And starting with a very a simple base set of colors. Where you're like, okay. You know, I am mixing red and blue to get purple. Which doesn't work, by the way. Uh, in, in paints, you get a brown. Very frustrating. Okay. Yeah, right now I'm 3D printing, besides these minis, which I'm basically done with it for now, I'm 3D printing a whole bunch of terrain for a, um, a dungeon that my player is going to go through next week. Um, and kind of my challenge to myself is to 3D print all the terrain in the dungeon. And it's a big dungeon. So that's been kind of the fun uh, thing is to see, okay, how much... How much terrain can I actually print in you know, a week and a half, basically? Okay. And obviously, real people are not colored the exact same thing over their entire bodies. So ideally, you'd come back in over this and do you know darker tinges at various parts of the body. Um, I might well do that. We'll see. Let's do his hands. And again, I'm being fairly sloppy here. That's okay. 
Then I'll be coming back in and doing like the swords and such in a little bit. One thing I love about these acrylics is they do dry pretty darn fast. So I should be able to come back in and do a bunch of this um, even later on this evening. Um, and before I forget, I should also do the spear. You know, get that spear nice and brown. Spear of Destiny. You're right, this would be a great tiefling color. You're absolutely right. Good idea. Okay. So I forget, Mike, I know you've been uh, playing some D&D. &D. Are you still in a game right now? You still playing? There we go. And Oh, the feet, of course. He has bare feet. We will do the feet. As usual, not worrying about getting some paint on the base. But yeah, I'm being a little more careful than usual about that. Like, why not? So I'm not exactly glopping. But if I get a little bit of a line on the uh, on the base, I'm, I'm living with that. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, there's one foot, and then the other foot. <laughs> and we'll just get all of this nice and, oops, come back here, yeah. there we are. On and off, um, gotcha, so doing some one shots. That's what we're doing this this uh, Monday actually. Is a one off. Actually bringing a new player into the game who has no experience with D&D or, or role playing at all and unfortunately the entire group's at level 15. So we figured let's just do a one shot with completely new characters um, completely one shot characters um, at actually at level 12 just to kind of get him uh, in the door, and then we'll throw all of them away. Okay, so here's our Efriti with just that base skin color on. And I'll let that dry for a little bit and then come back. And then, like I said, I'm going to grab him and um, hmm. I'm just going to dab some red. Like on his chest area, maybe? And then his arms. Get kind of that sense of viscera. How's that look? That's nice. I like that. Again, just a little bit of, of detailing to give him some sense of, of being a little different. That's cool. Okay. Glad I did that. And then, like I said, we'll come back to him. Um, we're going to need blood all over our body down here, obviously. So I'm just going to kind of smear blood on that. Going with very little paint on the, the brush, but just smearing some red. Hard to see that. On the body. And then I think same thing with the guy up here. We'll just do some general dabbing of, uh, of red. He's, uh, he's still fully armored, so it wouldn't make sense to have too much blood. Some of this blood is going to be obviously some other people that he was fighting. But I like the idea of having that little sense of... Uh, of wounds that have kind of soaked out through the uh, through the clothing. Or like I said, maybe he got on him during his battle. And, and definitely some around the sword. The sword's gonna need blood, or the, this axe. There's an axe kind of embedded in his chest. So we're gonna throw some, some blood all on that. 
Um, and let's do the same thing with these things. Actually, I should come back in and, and do some, yeah. Um, so let me not do that. I, what I wanna do is get some sterling color. No, some steel color. And paint these weapons that are sticking out. I'm okay with the, the axe not being as shiny. Um, but I want uh, definitely this guy, this axe here, to look more shiny. And then I'll come back in and uh, add some, some blood to the shiny axe. Uh, again, just to represent that it had some, it saw some action. Hard to get in there. Yeah. One off shadow on pitch. Nice. I like that idea. Matt Colville did a somewhat similar thing with his upcoming game where he gave the player a couple of different pitch the players a couple of different pitches as to what kind of like mercenary company they would be. You know, where it's like, okay, are you this ex-military group? Are you just sort of random swords for hire, whatever? And he kind of um, planned out some ideas for each of those. Um, but it kind of gave them that sense of, oh, yeah, let's, let's, let's figure out what we want to be. So I'm just putting a little bit of, of this metallic stuff on the edge of that, that axe. Let's give it, again, kind of that sense of it being shiny but it's caked in blood, so that's fine. Uh, and then there's other, there's a sword here, I think. That looks fairly swordy. So I will give that some shine. Actually, not too much. I kind of want that to be dull. You know, it's, it's been through a war. It should not necessarily be incredibly shiny and pretty. And you're gonna probably come back and add some some brown to that. Uh, that's that. That's that. That's that. Uh, that pike that's going into the guy. Again, I'm just gonna stick some silver paint onto the onto the hilt, and then I'll come back and add some more blood to that. Um, <clears throat> and then, oh yeah, that's definitely. Uh, get the tip of the skeleton. Try to get this in. Uh, yeah. Somebody has a giant, giant uh, engine. <clears throat> so to speak. So that the end of that, uh, that spear gets a nice shiny point. Lovely. Again, just a, a nice little detail. I might even, yeah. <coughs> Any others? Oh, actually, while we're at it, again, we want our Efriti to have a metal sword. So we will give him a metal sword. Now, this metallic paint does not uh, adhere very well to this particular kind of uh, plastic. So it often, I mean, I would actually do better if I were went over this with a white paint as a base coat, as a primer, and then added the other uh, metallic over it. Um, as it stands, I'll have to do a few coats of the silver. But yeah, it's kind of six in one, half dozen the other. Do you do one coat of white and then one coat of silver or two coats of silver? Or in this case, a, metallic, a steel colored metallic. Okay, and then try to make sure we get it all in all those spots. Yeah, I think that'll, that'll look good. And do I want the, the hilt? Yeah, we'll do the entire hilt in the silver. And like I said, I, and I might come back and darken that up or something. I don't know. Like that might be like a, a bronze or something. It certainly has kind of a bronze uh, tone to him. Uh, with all the, the bracelets and such, so we might get that for the, the hilt of the sword, but for now, that's going to be... Ooh! I missed a spot. 
I missed the inside of his arm. Let me fix that. Man, hard to get in there. Easier when you go in from a different angle, as it turns out. Okay. Get in all those little spots. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, my head is just stuffed with phlegm. Okay, that is drying slowly, but it's drying. And now, hopefully, well, no. Wait on that. Yeah, let me let me go grab some some orcs. I've got some orcs, but I've also got some gnolls. Oops. Gnolls should be blood spattered. So I'm definitely going to throw some blood all over their lips. And some on their chest. And probably some on their hands, too. Yeah. So there's a knoll with some uh, some blood spatters on him. That feels very, very right. And uh, I'm definitely putting some of this blood on their uh, their jaws. All over those jaws. And then I'm gonna do. I'm gonna, give, I'm gonna give this guy blood all over the his right arm. There. Maybe someone is. Yeah. There's spatter some down there too. So he's got a a good amount of of blood on him. Come on. Focus in. Focus in. You can do it. You can do it. I didn't want to do it this time. Hmm. Oh well. You get the idea. Yeah. I'm putting a lot of stuff where I can easily knock it down. I should not do that. Just move this down there. Move my paints. Alright. More blood on the knolls. Not the water. I think I'll do more blood on his face. He's going to be... It's like he just uh, devoured something in something's innards, and there's just blood all over him, all over his mouth and his muzzle. Yeah, that's good. I'm gonna do a bunch more red inside the mouth. I'm gonna maybe just overdo that a bit. Yeah, I like that. Sorry, you can't see that at all. Keep forgetting. And then we'll do some blood on his hands as well. Because again, I'm sure he got his his hands deep in all that stuff. There we go. There's our nice vicious knoll. Yeah, it does not want to get close up on these guys. I should uh do it manually. Ah, oh, it's getting close. But yeah, a lot of lot of blood all over him. Um, I keep them all on a shelf. 
Yeah, I'm a, I'm a fan of the, the shell system because then, you know, people can see it. It's kind of a, a fun a fun thing for people to uh, experience. He's going to have blood, I think, all over his pants and his legs. Like he stepped through a whole bunch of blood. Yeah, I kind of like that. Got a little bit on the hands, a little bit on the hands. Yeah. He's going to have some bloody. A bloody time. Bloody good time. In fact, let's, let's add a little joke here. We're going to give him a little bloody paw print. So there's some. On the back, I added some, some little blood paw prints. And here's our guy with blood on his uh, on his thing. Maybe a little bit more? Yeah, a little more. Ended up with a bunch on his uh, on the sides, not so much on the middle. So let me add some more and some more accents and such. Good. Okay. And our orcs. So we're gonna, like I said before, we're gonna definitely throw a bunch of blood on the on the edges of those weapons. Give them some nice bloody weapons. Yeah, that's cool. And then we're just going to kind of spatter some blood on them otherwise generally. I like that. Like I said, it just adds some something to the to an orc. There we go. There we go. There's that bloody axe, and you can just you may just barely be able to see a little bit of red detail around him. All right. Same thing here. Blood along the edge of the blade. Both edges. And some on that side. Make it make sense. And then I'm going to add some to his body in general. And it almost looks like he's uh, like marked up with blood, like he's you know smeared it on in a pattern. That's kind of cool. So here's our orc. I think we need more light on him. There we go. Like I said, with some blood on the blade and some blood on his on his body. Cool. And one more. Uh, again, got to have some blood on his uh, axe. Well, I think this will be just one side. Maybe. You know, you know what? I'm going to have him have blood all over that axe. He's going to be smeared with blood. Yeah. Just for fun. Yeah, fun. Okay. And we're going to throw a bunch on his hands and gloves and such. And some on his, uh, that's his body too, I think. You're going to get nice, smeared with blood on large swaths of him. Okay. Almost got pink pants there. Very bloody pants. Cool. All right. So that's definitely uh, 
giving them some some cool advantages. Uh, we're getting yeah, tacky on the Afridi, in a good sense. All right, uh, as I mentioned, I want to make sure I get the spear on our giant uh, our giant skeleton, nice and brown. So let's do that next. Yeah, my fingers are fine. Mm. This is a simple brown. I'm going to lather that fairly carefully. Actually, quite carefully. Although, if I mess up here, I can always go back over those sections with white. And re-white them, so to speak. Not rewrite, but re-white. That's a nice nice thing to, to realize. That even if you mess up at, that, at this stage, you can always go back and fix it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then add some brown there. Try to get it in. Okay, and we just need the brown here on this end. Oh, I got a bunch of silver. <laughs> um, or I guess um, I got a bunch of the, the, the dark gray spilled over here on the back side of his uh, hand, which looks a little odd. So I might go back and uh, touch that up with some white. Okay. Cool. Here's our... Oh, a little more. Right there. Touch that up. Add a little more brown. Oh, and there's a little more. Need to get in. Back in here. Okay. So there's our giant skeleton. With uh, the spear. Grr, grr. Rawr. Rawr. Cool. <laughs> Looking pretty good. So I do, if I do as I say so myself, I'm smeared with blood. All right. So what else? Um, I think we can probably go back and start work on our Ifriti, um, the rest of his clothes and such. So what do we have for him? We said sort of a, a dark blue and, and gold accents. I may change that and give him uh, a brown tassel. I'm going to go ahead and do that. So, um, he has this rather lovely uh, loincloth, and then this what looks like sort of a leather cord keeping it up. Um, and in the illustration, it's this sort of gold tassel, it's this sort of gold rope. But I think I'm going to go a little simpler than that, and just make it like a brown, a simple like brown belt, basically. I'm just going to paint it that. Because I have my brown out, and I'm fine with that. And again, if, if I later figure that, well, I kind of like the idea of something a little more uh, a little more flashy, you can always come back and repaint it. But I think that will be a better... Um, or, you know, that, that'll be fine. That'll look okay. I'm actually going to paint in the middle of that. So I'm just going to paint this thing all around. And I think I mentioned before, when you're painting something that has delicate spots, it's always better to load up the brush with paint, paint the big areas, and then um, while you have the brush with much of the paint off, go back, go into the more delicate areas because you have less paint on the brush. And that way, you're not gooping paint on these really small, delicate spots. And this brown definitely does not want to cover this, uh, this white very well. That is a shame. But I think we can make it work. Okay. Ah. 
getting some brown kind of leaching up in certain spots. Can I brush some of that off? Not really. Yeah, a little bit. Much less noticeable. Okay, so there's that brown belt. Let me go back in and touch up a few of these spots. It could be a little darker. done. Again, it's more, in a sense, it's more laziness on my part at this point. I'm like, eh, that'll be fine. It doesn't look inappropriate on a Freedy to have a, a leather belt as opposed to some ornate gold brocaded thing, which may look a little strange. Okay, and then we can go ahead and add the, um, that sort of bronze or copper to his... Uh, wristbands and such, and actually I noticed um, the the shoulder, as you might be able to notice, has got a little bit of white, a uh, little bit of paint's rubbed off just in kind of um, over the last few moments, so I'm going to go back in and touch that up. A few spots where I've noticed, ah, I could have a little more, a little more red there. In fact, Some bits of the head I'm gonna go in and touch up okay now here's a sort of a coppery color and I'm gonna use that on his wrist bolt things his his bracelets I think you call them and this is why I love using these metallic colors as you can see because you can see just how much this is starting to pop with that metallic wristband. Just really adds a lot to the uh, to the effect. Oops. <coughs> okay. Just brushing that on. This is a very soft uh, brush. I have to be careful because it's very easy for this to uh, kind of go everywhere. Because with these soft bristles, it just kind of flops around. And you can very easily uh, mess up there. And get paint where you don't want it. Which is always a always a problem. Okay, there are those bracelets, and now we do the anklets. Second verse, same as the first. It's gonna be a little trickier. I'm gonna have to get the edges there, the tops. And again, I'm gonna get kind of load up the the brush with paint for the main sections, and then come back on the tops with the brush less painty, so to speak. And that way I can have much more control over how much paint is actually getting thrown down there. And then go in here. Okay, there's that anklet. Cool. And now we'll do the other one. And trying to be fairly careful here. I'm actually impressing myself. <coughs> Considering how I'm <laughs> sick. And uh, it's fairly late at night for me. I'm still somehow managing to uh, stay inside the lines so to speak. I recall there's not much in the way over, yeah, okay. This one's tighter on him, this anklet, so there's not as much above for me to uh, coat with this color. Okay. There we go. Okay. 
So the anklets and bracelets are done. Again, some nice, nice effect there. I really like that. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that blue. Well, wait, a, maybe we'll, we'll wait a moment. We'll wait, we'll wait, we'll wait, we'll wait a moment. Um, let's go back and do our gargoyle, as we said we would. So where's the gargoyle? There's the, there's the paintbrush. I'm just gonna go ahead and douse him with that and let it sit for a minute. It's so shiny. And then come back in. I'm actually okay with this being darker. Um, this is not coming off as much and I'm totally fine with that. Um, I like the idea of there being a lot of black on this once we're, once we're done. Having sort of a mottled gray-black totally works for a gargoyle. <coughs> and I need to learn um, you know, effective dilution, how much water to put in versus how much paint. That's a thing I'm definitely not good at at all. And this is sticking quite a lot to this, which again is good in this case. I'm, I'm happy with that. Uh, I guess part of it too is I'm now pushing some of the the the, uh, the paint off of the brush and I'm, I'm assuming what that is doing is actually pushing a lot of the water off as opposed to the paint. So the paint's staying on the brush. Might as well do, the, do that. And it's as in effectively undiluting it, if you will. Let that sit for a few moments. And then I'll probably do the back. Also helps that there's just, yeah. Uh, there are so many bits and bobs to this, that it's kind of hard to get in and get much of this paint out. Okay. Then we'll do the back of the uh, the wings. I don't like the idea of them having darker wings. Huh? That's actually kind of cool. The uh, there's his there's his front. Come on, get up in there. This camera gets really weird. There we are. So there's his front, and then if you see it flipping over, you have these rather dark wings. It's kind of nice. So I'm just going to blot some of that that black off, but keep it pretty. Yeah, pretty much exactly as that is. It's nice. It's quite nice. Adds a bit of a sense of gothicness to it. Okay, yeah, there's. So before, I put him down here, and then I zoomed him in, and it kept him in focus, and now it doesn't. How bizarre. Yeah. Huh. I think it was close. Okay. But you see how it's definitely darker now. All right, let that dry. Um... So our skeleton's basically done. Gargoyle's basically done. This guy. Ooh, you know. Let's paint. Let's get the brown. Where's the brown? Is this the brown? That's the brown. That's the brown. Uh, we have, obviously, various hafts. And shields on him that should be brown. So let's do that. Add that bit of detail. I 
I really should paint the uh, the dead guys to make them stand out. But that's also going to be a pain. Excuse me. So, I don't know. Perhaps they're just kind of integrated into the rock creature and so they've the color on them have faded away. Perhaps. Oh, actually, yeah. Uh, and then we have that standard. I'll paint that. And that in there. Might as well paint around that. I don't know what the standard color is going to be. The color of that flag. Oops. No clue. Um, let's think about that. Something, uh, something, you know, clearly visible. Something I think that would really stand out would be nice. Or maybe it's dirty. Maybe it's uh, old. I don't know. Maybe like a flesh-colored thing. Not like literally flesh-colored, but just more of a... Kind of a, this kind of a color would not be bad. In other words, not reminiscent of flesh, but just a little more beigey. Okay. And then yeah, we have this guy. And ideally, I, I mean, these would not all be the same color brown, right? I'd be varying that. Um, uh, each time I do a new a new weapon but for now I'm not too worried I can always again come back and and do that <coughs> but for now this just makes the monster pop in a very appealing way that's gravy so to speak okay um, and then we have yeah, those shields. So there's a simple shield. And we'll throw down the brown on that. And then when, one more thing here is we'll, we'll have to mix up the color for that Ifriti's loincloth. Not quite sure what you'd call that piece of clothing. But that'll do for me. I'm sure there's a specific term, but it's also a loincloth. So that's what's going to happen. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to have to wipe that off with my fingers. Shouldn't have, but it was an immediate reaction to getting that uh, that brown off. Right. And try to get it all the way around. Now this shield would probably be actually banded with some kind of metal. So maybe at some point I'll come back in and add that highlight. But for now it's more important to get it brown. Again, we're getting nice things. I can always come back in and touch these things up a little bit. Uh, you know. Okay. So there's all that. Oh, there's a sword back here. I didn't even notice. Kind of embedded in him. Cool. Oh, and there's a bit of shield there. Another thing to note. And also, you can see the back of the spear from here, so I'm going to put some brown on there, and then we'll do, go ahead and do that shield. And as I like to tell people, one of the great things about this is that the more you look at it, the more you'll see things you can change, which means you're getting an eye for quality. That does not mean that you should feel beholden to add all those details. Like that's something that you can certainly do at some point in the future. But don't feel like that just because you can see how much better it could be, you have to do that right now. 
That can totally be a thing to do later. All right. Cool. All right. Yep, I'm fairly happy with that. Um, so here's our kind of rock monster with the brown painted in on its various pieces. Let me say, just add some, some visual flair to it. Cool, cool. <sighs> yeah, I'm definitely gonna finish off with this Afridi. And one more new, uh, new glove for that, I think. Getting awfully uh, clammy. Let's figure out his color. I have this brush, which will be very nice. Um, I have blue, which is almost gone, but I have another bottle. Um, so the Ifriti here has this, oh, it's this blue-green thing. No, I have some silvery, I'm sorry, some glittery green. I think I'm gonna mix those two, see what I get. Let's, that should be enough, enough blue, I should think. And we'll pop this off and add some green, some glittery green. Mix that in. What do we get? It's a, yeah, okay, that'll work. It's still a dark, you know, let's add more green. It's still basically the same blue. What do we have now? Now we have a nice bright blue. That's cool. Um, okay. Let's see what happens. That's a bright blue. Wow. Okay. He will be uh, very visible on the battlefield, no question there. That's pretty, that's, that's nice though. Like, I love the idea of this just brilliantly colored bad guy. Like, no mistaking him. It's interesting. Definitely brighter than the illustration, but like I said, I'm 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 happy with that. I'm. I think it's a happy accident, to quote Bob Ross, who is more or less the patron saint of this channel, of this series. Because you know, you just get in there and you paint, and you see what happens. Just let yourself find whatever it is that you like, and you go with it. Because it's just painting, right? You're not you're not converting the masses. You're not you're not directing people in battle. You're just painting. And you can make this look as nice as you want. Now, it's going to be really hard for me to get in to the bottom of this. And, yep, I'm getting some blue. I got some blue on him. On the underside of him. Um, I think I'm just going to have to live with that. So I'm going in the other side. To get, yep, I'm getting some blue on the other side. That's, that's, that's a shame. But I don't think anyone's ever going to see that too much. Not too worried. All right. I'll get in some of these little white spots. All right. Cool. Can 
Can I get in? Effectively not. All right. Just trying to get in some of that. Get it. Get out some of that blue that got on the other side of his legs. But actually, you know what? I still have. Do I still have? Yeah. There's still some some of that color. So hopefully, I can just get in here and kind of paint over it. Now I'm basically mixing the blue and the gray, the the, the blue and the red. Right, like that's not dried yet, but it's better than letting it sit there and having a big old blue spot. So now I just have some mildly bluish spots, so to speak. Yeah, that's fine. And actually, I'll take this opportunity to touch up some of the spots that are a little light. Okay. Nice. <laughs> There's our Efriti. Er, brilliant blue skirt, kilt, whatever. And he's coming to get you. Oh, I almost forgot. We want his fiery red sword. Um, I have my red. I'm going to take my red. You know what? I might just... I'm going to take the same brush that I was using for the, the, the blood. I'm going to dip that in here and use that to get just... Yeah, I'm going to sort of dry brush some red paint onto the tip of the sword. Um, I'm hoping it will look kind of like fire, but I just realized fire doesn't really look red. It looks more yellowy. So maybe, so first off, let's make sure we're getting some red and not, that's looking fairly, yeah. It was mostly the, the blood. So let's just do that. And then I'm going to, uh, actually, yeah, I'm going to. going to rub off a bunch of that. And then, heck, why not? Uh, let me grab some yellow <coughs> and do the same thing. And you, you, we're using the same brush because I'm not going to be coming back to it. That's okay. And actually, we're getting a nice sort of orangey out of that. And we'll grab some more on the end of the thing and make the top pretty darn yellow. And that should look a little bit more like a flaming sword, I hope. What do we got? Yeah, looks more like a sword covered in uh, ketchup and mustard. Okay. So, let me brush some of that off, or rather just dab some of that off. What do we have now? Eh, looking, looking a little bit more like a flaming sword. Like that, that is a, that is what I, if somebody told me that's a flaming sword, I'd say, oh, okay, yep, I see it. Cool. Okay. There's, <laughs> excuse me, there's our Efridi for the day with his flaming sword. Here's our rock monster with some nice detail on him now. You know what? Almost forgot. Um, let's do. Do I have a spare brush? Not really. Um, let me yeah, just use that that brush. I'm gonna paint the standard a bright, bright yellow.
Like I think it's just gonna be an interesting color that will visually differentiate it. And it's actually being a little um, mixed in with the red, which makes sense. It's gonna be it should be dirty, right? It shouldn't be one total uniform color. So I'm fine with that. And then let's just make sure we get it on all the surfaces. Cover all the little spots where it's tied down. Yeah, my, uh, my hand is now getting very, very shaky. So I'll probably have to come back in here and revisit this at some point and fix it up. Make this look a little bit more uh, more reasonable, but we do that, we do this, make sure we get all our edges. Got way too many things now, way too many bottles open. There we are. All right. Cool, cool, cool. All right, there's our flag. I like that. We have a dirty yellow flag. Uh, and then let's look at our gargoyle, who we darkened up. Again, it kind of refuses to <laughs> focus on that. Perhaps it's just too weird of a shape. And there we are. And so again, not much detail on here, but just enough to give it some, some highlighting and some, uh, some richness. But it's basically just black and gray. Uh, and then our skeleton, our giant skeleton. There it is. Gonna poke ya, gonna poke ya. Cool. And then just, see, we'll see if our our camera will enjoy, can figure out our, our knoll here. There we are. There's a nice blood spattered knoll. Blood all over his, uh, his snout and such. Good on his hands. That's a good knoll there. All right. And do we have a, yeah, we'll show you the detail on orc too, hopefully. Here is a nice, Blood spattered orc. Yeah. A little bit of blood around, some blood on that axe. Cool. This has been Workshop Wednesday. Thank you all very much for joining me. And I'm going to go relax a bit. We did not get to demo Gorgon. Have to paint up this guy some other time. That's okay. Always something else to do. Until next time, make something.